Wish we could turn back time to the good old days when the mama sang us to sleep. And isn't it amazing that the Muslims will try to criticize us for worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh, and that while they're teaching the worship of Adam, and that that was Satan's sin, not worshiping Adam? So according to the Quran, this is supposed to corroborate this. This is a continuation of this, supposedly. This is not going to contradict this, and yet it contradicts it in almost all of its teachings. Right. By the way, we're, we're in chapter two of this book the whole time. Chapter one is just a short introduction. Chapter two is called The Cow. So the, everything I'm giving you is from the chapter in the Quran that's known as The Cow, you know, which is really the first main chapter because the, the chapter one is just like a little intro. So chapter two is a big long chapter. It's called The Cow. That's where this is all coming from. It's all coming from The Cow, folks. All right, so chapter, ch chapter two No, chapter three is not because they don't they don't do pork, so <laughs> they don't. So we don't need you to change it, Mohammed. Yeah. Jesus has an unchangeable priesthood. It's done. It's finished. The New Testament. He said, "Behold, I come quickly." He didn't say, "Behold, I'm sending another guy 600 years from now that's going to change everything." He said, "No, behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be." Jesus is coming. Yeah. That's who we're looking for. We're not looking for some guy who came to Arabia, you know, 600 and some years later and wants to change it. Oh, everything's corrupt. Let me change everything. Cuz Gabriel's talking to me in the cave. It's false. Let him be accursed. Amen. And they're constantly blessing Muhammad all the time. Constantly, every time, they cannot say his name without saying, peace be upon him. Peace be, no, piss be upon him. Amen. Because you know what? Muhammad, the Bible says, let him be accursed. Amen. Let him be accursed. Yeah. Not, there's no blessings upon Muhammad. The Bible says, if any man preaches any other gospel than that which we have received, let him be accursed. Amen. Say, well, you know, you shouldn't say that because you're going you're gonna to anger Muslims. You know what? Let him be accursed. Yeah, right. Amen. Like it or lump it. And my goal is not to anger or offend Muslims. My goal is that Muslims will be saved. Right. You know, I want to reach Muslims with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But you know what? I'm not going to sit here and be respectful toward a false prophet. If that's what it takes to win Muslims, then I'm not going to win any Muslims to the Lord because the Bible commanded me to let him be accursed. Right. Right. And you know what? I don't respect all religions. Because when Cain brought an offering unto the Lord, other than that which was the blood of the lamb, when he brought those fruits and vegetables, the Bible says that God did not have respect unto his offering. Right. God did not respect Cain's religion. And woe unto these false prophets, the Bible says, for they've gone in the way of Cain. Yeah. So if God didn't respect Cain, why would I respect those who've gone in the way of Cain? Yeah. Cain is one who brought forth work salvation. Abel brought the blood of the lamb. Amen. And you know what? The Bible says, why did Cain kill Abel? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. And let me tell you something. The spiritual Cains of Islam, they will kill unbelievers of their religion. And that's in the Quran too. We'll get there. It's there. This book has 114 chapters in it. You know how many we're looking at right now? One, the cow. We're still on the cow, folks. Everything we're looking at is from the cow. That's all we're, I mean, it's one chapter. It's filled with heresy. One chapter it doesn't confirm these scriptures at all like it claims to. Listen to what, listen to what the Quran says in Cal, Cal verse 91. Okay. Chapter two, verse 91. Slay them wherever you find them. Slay means kill. Slay them wherever you find them. Drive them out of the places from which they drove you. Idolatry is more grievous than bloodshed. But do not fight them within the precincts of the holy mosque. Unless they attack you there. If they attack you, slay them. <laughs> Thus shall the unbelievers be requited. But if they desist, God is forgiving and compassionate. Fight them until idolatry is no more and God's religion reigns supreme. But if they desist, attack none except the wrongdoers. 
a sacred month for a sacred month. Sacred things, too, are subject to retaliation. If anyone attacks you, attack him as he attacked you. So he, listen to this over and over again. You know, anybody attacks you, slay him. Attack them that attack you. Fine. And then a few, a few uh, verses later, in verse 216, he says, fighting is obligatory for you. And he's not talking about a spiritual warfare. He's talking about literal sword fighting. Go slay the wicked. Fighting is obligatory for you, much as you dislike it. But you may hate a thing, although it's good for you. And love a thing, although it's bad for you. God knows, but you know not. You don't, God knows, you know not. Just shut up and fight because I said so. And go slay these unbelievers until God's religion reigns supreme. Now, is this what Jesus taught? Did Jesus teach, attack those who attack you? No. If they attack you, slay them. Is that what the Bible teaches? No. Look, it's 114 chapters. This is the second one we're looking at. And we've already seen a lot of lies and heresy, haven't we? Well, the house of Imran, Imran is I-M-R-A-N, is referring to Amram, okay? Now, if you know your Bible, you know that Amram was the father of who? Remember Amram and Jochebed? Who were their children? Exactly, Moses. Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, right? Those are the three children of Amram and Jochebed. Well, here's the thing. In Arabic... The name Mary is Miriam. It's the same as that character from the Old Testament. So they have the same name. We, we say in English, Miriam and Mary. But in Arabic, it's the same name. It'd be Miriam and Miriam. So because Muhammad was illiterate, he just made the foolish mistake of throughout the Quran thinking that Miriam, the sister of Moses and Aaron, was the same person as Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now, here's the problem with that. Those people lived close to 2,000 years apart. I mean, and here's the thing. Whatever you believe, whatever your religion, these are historical figures, folks. Yeah. Even an atheist will tell you that Jesus of Nazareth was a real person. Okay. Anybody knows that Moses lived, you know, not quite 2,000, but almost 2,000 years before Jesus. We're talking people that are separated by many, many centuries because think about it, after Moses, you've got what? 400 years of the judges. They, they, they have 400 years under the judges. Then they have the kings, Saul, David, and Solomon. That's 120 years. Then you've got, you know, the time of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he leads the northern kingdom into sin, 390 years. So it's like 400 plus 120 plus 390. Then another... 500 years. So, I mean, you're looking at a long period of time. This is a pretty stupid mistake to make, to mix up Miriam, the sister of... I mean, this is like something that a small child would mix up, where they think that a character from Exodus is a character from Matthew. Think about it. Exodus and Matthew. That's pretty far apart. Yeah. But because he was illiterate and because he was a false teacher, he makes this error. So this house of Imran is talking about, it's talking about Mary being born and it's talking about Mary giving birth to Jesus and it calls her Mary, the, the daughter of Amram because of the fact that they think that it's the same person. Now, a lot of people, and, and it says in the footnote at the bottom of the page, in the Quran, Amram is also the Virgin Mary's father because it talks about, you know, how they're the same person. Now, some people will try to cover for this and say, oh, it's not really the same. It's just, they just both happen to be named Amram, but it's a different Amram, you know. But here's the proof that it's not. If you jump forward to, uh, let's see, chapter 19 of the Quran, around verse 27, it talks about how Mary goes out into the desert and basically comes back with a baby. You know, totally different than the Bible's teaching of, of, you know, the manger and, you know, no room in the inn and Joseph's there and all. Totally different story in the Quran, of course. But in the Quran, carrying the child, listen to this, carrying the child, she came to her people who said to her, Mary, you have indeed done a shameful deed. You know, because she leaves and comes back with a kid. No Joseph in this story. Just, you know, Mary leaves, goes out in the desert, comes back with a baby. 
Mary, you've indeed done a shameful deed, sister of Aaron. Your father, or sister of Aaron? So not only is it saying Amram's her dad, it's saying Aaron's her brother. Because he truly did mix up <laughs> Miriam of the Old Testament and Miriam of the New Testament. Because in Arabic, it's the same name. There's a footnote at the bottom of the page here in this edition of the Quran. It appears that Miriam, Aaron's sister, and Miriam, mother of Jesus, were, according to the Quran, one and the same person. <laughs> well, that's amazing that they lived so many hundreds and hundreds of years apart that they could be the same person. But when you're illiterate and you can't read the Bible, you're going to make mistakes like that when you're just going on hearsay of a vague knowledge of the Bible. 